All right, we're going to take a look at tracing text on an image taken from an iPhone. So what, what I've got is a request from a client to take this image and basically make the text digital. What I'm going to do is place this image on the bottom layer of the Adobe Illustrator file, and then I'm going to lock that layer, and then I'm going to trace over the text on the top layer. So let's see how that's done. So I'm going to go back over to Illustrator, and I've got these two layers. I'm going to name this bottom layer just by double-clicking in the name there, Source Image. And then this top layer, I'm going to name Tracing Layer. So if you have any questions about how layers work, take a look at my Layers video, which you should see a card here to click on so you can get taken to that. So go ahead and take a look at that uh, layers video. It walks you through all the ins and outs of layers and how to understand them and use them to your best advantage in being a graphic designer. So back on to this, what I'm going to do is choose File and then Place. And what I want, you'll notice that I have the, the source file in the same folder as my Illustrator file which is good to make sure that the link to that uh, file stays consistent. So you want to make sure that whatever file you're pulling in to trace stays in the same place so that Adobe Illustrator can always reference that file. And I'll provide another video showing how to place images and how to relink images if you move the file out of the folder that it was originally in. So watch for that. Anyways, go ahead and select the image and you'll notice that an icon appears with the image in the cursor and you can literally just uh, click anywhere and that's going to place it in the file at its original size. I can adjust the size if I want to but I'm not going to do that at this point. I want to kind of keep the file in its original form while we trace. Once I have that on this bottom layer, I'm going to click next to the eyeball and lock that layer. So now I can grab anywhere and it's not going to move it. Then I'm going to select the tracing layer and we'll zoom in just a little bit. And I'm going to go over to the tool panel and choose the pen tool. And we're basically going to take this top section one character at a time. So I'll just uh, start with this A here and make that first part. You'll notice that I have a fill happening when I added that third anchor point. A fill automatically started happening. So I'm just going to choose none over here and then I'm also going to choose none for the stroke so that we can just work with the basic pen tool. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to hit escape so I can lose that anchor point. Now I want to create a path from here to here. You'll notice that if I hover over that path it's trying to add a add an anchor point tool. I don't really want to do that so I'm just going to zoom in a little and I'm going to add an anchor point here and here so that it's one path separate from the original one. Then I'm just going to hit escape and then I'm going to press the A key so that I get the direct selection tool. I'm going to drag this first anchor point over just a little bit till I see that it's intersecting with that very first segment. And then I'm going to grab this second anchor point tool and drag it over to this segment. I'm going to bring it up just a little so that it intersects right about there. You'll notice that I'm not getting it quite where I want it, so I'm just going to bring it over and on the Mac I'm going to press Command U to stop the snapping. Now what that means is I can drag this anywhere I want now and it's not going to snap to that line. The disadvantage is, is I can't see where it intersects. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to select this other one and I'm going to hit Command U again. Pull it out just a little bit and then I'm going to bring it back in. Now I can see that it's intersecting. I'm going to change this anchor point to a smooth anchor point. I don't need this second handle, so I'm going to bring it in all the way to the anchor point so it disappears. And then I'm going to just add a slight curve to that cross section of the A. And let's take a look at this one. I think we're okay 
here. Now, I don't know if she wants this segment of the path as thick as she has it here, so I'm going to leave it as is for now. And then when I send her the first iteration, if she wants that thickened up, I can, I can do that. But we're not going to worry about that at this point. I'm going to move on to the S now. And I'm just going to start at the beginning of the, the S at the top. And I'm going to add anchor points to every place that it has a pronounced curve. And if you have any questions about uh, doing this part, check out my Adobe Illustrator Pen Tool Tutorial Part 2, which you should now see a card for that. That kind of walks you through how best to place anchor points on curved sections of, of paths. Now that I have that, I'm going to hit Escape so I can lose that. And then I'm going to grab the Direct Selection tool again. And I'm going to choose a couple of these. I just dragged and selected those two anchor points. And then I'm going to hold the Shift key and drag again and select these two. And then hit Convert to Smooth. Now this gives me quite a bit to work with very quickly. So I'm just going to hold down the Shift key and drag these handles out till they line up with basically the center of this handwriting. And you'll notice that I'm I'm holding the shift key so that it constrains these handles to be vertical or horizontal based on where they're at. Now this one I'm going to nudge over with the arrow key just a little bit so it gets more in line with the center and I'm pull that up. And you'll notice that it moved that segment up a little and I'm just going to pull that down and bring this in just nudge it in just a bit and you'll see that it is now lining up with that, which is great. And then I'm going to finish this up by dragging this path out a little bit and this one here. And that's going to give me a nice smooth path for the S. And we're going to do the same thing here for the H. This one is going to be a lot like the A character because I just need one straight line here. And then I want to connect the path for this segment of the H. So I'm going to start down here, put one right here, and we're going to end right there. Let's choose the direct selection key, and then bring that in to intersect with this segment here, which we'll probably want right about here. So that looks pretty good. And then we're going to smooth this out. I'm going to hold down the shift key again to constrain it. And Depending on the client's preference, whether or not she wants this little bend here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave it without, just because I think it looks a little bit better without the bend. I've got Ash done. I'm going to select both of these segments and group them by choosing Command-G on the Mac or Control-G on the PC. And then I'm going to choose these segments and group them as well. Now I've got this and symbol here, which is kind of just a scrawl, which looks pretty cool. So I'm going to choose the pen tool again and make this two different paths. I can see that she has a very pronounced extension right here. So I'm going to make sure we incorporate that. So I'm going to hit the escape key and then I'm going to start a new path to do this add and symbol. And I'm just putting the anchor points on each of the pronounced corners here. I want to make these anchor points uh, somewhat smooth. We don't want them that smooth, so we're going to bring in those handles quite a bit. But you'll notice, this is a good thing to pay attention to, you'll notice that these actually cross now, which isn't what we want. So it is very easy to get confused on how the paths actually work. So this path right here, because it crosses, should actually be over on this side. Now I can fix that by grabbing the handle and rotating it all the way around. And then bringing it in just a little bit. And then this one in just a little bit. Now you'll notice it's not quite what I want yet because I have to adjust this one as well. If you do a lot of tracing, you'll actually see that weirdness uh, quite a bit. So it's definitely a good idea to understand what is happening when the anchor points automatically cross. Not a big deal, you just gotta wrap your mind around that. So I'm gonna change this one and I don't need this last anchor point. So I'm going to 
pull that up just a little bit and then this last one we're going to bring in just a hair. Now I think that captures the essence of her and symbol and bring that in and probably probably want to rotate this just a hair so that it can in fact I'm going to hit the shift key and constrain it to be horizontal. And then this one is looking good. I could even constrain this one to be horizontal as well, which will give me that nice little flare that you see right here. And then this one, we're gonna do the same thing. So I think that's gonna be a good idea for, for each of these. It's interesting how useful it is to press the shift key and constrain these either horizontal or vertically. And then this last one, we're gonna do the same thing here. You'll notice that it just makes the line snap really nicely. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab this anchor point and I want it to intersect with the actual squiggly part. So I'm going to choose the selection tool by pressing V on the keyboard and then drag and select both of those and hit Command G to group those or Control G on a PC. And now I've got just this last path to do which is the squiggly M. So I'm going to grab the pen tool and I'm going to just start placing anchor points wherever I see pronounced curves on the path. And then I'm going to actually place one here, 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 and we may get rid of a few of these once we get into it. Might even add a few more as well. But just want to reiterate, as you may have seen in a few of my other pen tool tutorial videos, that the less anchor points on a path, the better if you're looking for a smooth path. So less is more on this. I'm going to hit the escape key and then grab the direct selection tool yet again. And we're just going to start cleaning up these anchor points. I'm going, I know that basically all of these are going to be curved. So I can drag, drag and select a bunch of these and hit the uh, convert selected anchor points to smooth button. I think what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key and constrain these to be vertical and horizontal as needed yet again. And I am going to go with the smooth look on these. So you can see it's a bit choppy but I'm gonna go with the smooth look and see what she thinks of that. If she likes it, great, I'll be done. If not, I can iterate again and go from there. So you'll notice that my anchor points are looking pretty good because when I converted those to smooth, they pretty much snapped right to the path. That basically comes with practice, placing anchor points and getting used to where they go. So you'll start seeing that too as you use the pen tool more often. So I'm going to continue to, to work on these and you'll notice that there is kind of a swoop. Now we want that swoop. So I'm going to convert this and I'm going to leave that little cross in there. Now I could go like this, like we did on the other one, but I like how she has that cross. So I'm going to try to keep as much of that as I can. And I'm going to bring that in just a hair. And then this last one to make sure that I don't have this too big. I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to nudge it down just a little bit so that we can get most of the, the essence of this part of the E as she has it. And we can play with that once we actually apply a stroke to this path. I'm just going to keep moving on here. And you'll notice that she has kind of a, a darkened line here. So I'm going to grab the pen tool one more time and just add that segment there, hit escape. And we don't, there's really nothing more we need to do with that other than maybe bring it in just a hair. And I'll show you why we're gonna bring it in because we're gonna add caps to this stroke, curved end caps. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in just a second. Pull this one in, pull this one in. And then this last one, we're going to convert to a smooth anchor point bring that in and bring that in so and like i said we're going to keep it as smooth as possible 
So I'm not gonna worry about this part here. If she is wanting that, we can definitely add it. So what I wanna do is grab this second straight part that we added with the original selected and we'll group those again, Command G or Control G. And we're going to select this part here and we'll group all of these. And then we'll just group all of them now. So the reason why I'm doing that is I've got the, the one name, Ash, as a group, I've got this as a group, and now I've got this as a group. At this point, I wanna grab all three and make one more group so it's easier to select and copy and paste where it needs to go. At this point, we want to add a stroke to the path. So I'm just going to add a black stroke, and you'll notice that we can't really see it because it needs to be quite a bit thicker. So I opened up the stroke panel, and I'm going to nudge that up a bit. And you'll notice that I have very sharp corners and flat end caps. I'm going to change the end caps to the smooth. So you'll notice that it, it added that smooth little end cap. And then I'm going to change the corners to smooth as well. And you'll notice that it brought down that corner a little bit. That is basically tracing text. Now if I deselect it and then hide the source layer, you'll notice that I have a little bit of choppiness right here, which doesn't look good in my opinion. So I'm going to just bring that up. Now it's not going to be precisely tracing anymore, but I want to get rid of that choppiness. It doesn't look like that's going to do it. So I'm going to hit the remove anchor point key, which is the minus key on the keyboard, and then delete that. And then I'm going to grab this handle on the bottom anchor point and hold down the shift key and just bring that out. And I can restore visibility to that layer and you'll see that it looks pretty good actually. So I'm gonna bring that out. And so I lose that choppiness, which is exactly what I was wanting. So like I said earlier, less anchor points, the better. And we're gonna pull this out just a little more and we can see that it's looking really good. I do have a little bit of choppiness here that I don't really like. So we're gonna try this exact same thing. I'm gonna hit the minus key to get the remove anchor point tool, click that, and then I'm going to select this handle hold down the shift key and bring it out just a hair more. Let's restore the visibility. It needs to come in just a little more. And I think we got it. Let's bring this one in just a tiny bit. We'll go ahead and zoom out and you can see I've got Ash and M now. Looks really good, really crisp and really clear. What I would do at this point is select both of these and I like to keep a copy in case I need to come back and edit the original but I want to show her what this looks like as a PDF. So I'm going to hit copy here and then zoom in to the artboard and you can actually a quick key for this is command zero or control zero and what that does is fits the artboard into the window which is really cool and then I'm going to hit command V or control V to paste and then I'm just going to hold down the shift and the Alt or Option key and drag this in a little bit so that it fits on the page and the constraint ratio remains the same. There I have it. I've got the Ash and M text digitized. Hope this tutorial was useful. Take a look at my other Adobe Illustrator tutorials, which you can see links to in the comments section below. Appreciate you watching. Subscribe and have a great day. Thanks.